Hey everybody and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to develop on what we've already created in the last video an interior lighting setup and this time we're going to add a bit more realism to the scene. Before I get started I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that subscribed since the last video and all the support I had on the um, up close and personal video. Um, you guys are awesome. Thank you ever so much for those of you that commented. Thanks to everybody who has subscribed because um, we're <laughs> rapidly approaching 700 subscribers. It's absolutely insane, you know, to think that we're, um, you know, approaching a thousand is is crazy. So yeah, um, moving on, if you haven't subscribed, feel free to hit the button, give it a notification icon as well. Give us a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I do appreciate everybody who leaves comments. Um, <laughs> I do delete troll comments though, things that are just pointless, things that are already covered in the video or people trying to write their own tutorials in the comment section. Frankly, if you've got that much information that you want to share with people, just make your own YouTube videos. Don't leave comments on mine. Uh, okay, let's jump right into this then. So what I've got is our previous scene. I've turned off the visibility for the plane and I've changed the HDRI to one which is set on a sunny day and I've rotated the dome using the render settings. Well, actually I haven't because I haven't had to. I will just give this a moment to tick over. But if you uh, need the sun to be shining in through the window, you can tweak the dome rotation here. Say if I was to change that by 10 degrees, you would see after a few seconds, the uh, light shining in the window comes in at a slightly different angle. Now, there is something to bear in mind with when you do this. If you're rendering a scene and you're trying to emulate times of day, don't use dome rotation because the view out of the window, if you'll notice, if we go back to zero, the view out of the window changes because the whole HDRI is changing, not just the light source. And the people who are playing your game, they're seeing the time of day change, will notice the, <laughs> <laughs> the fact that the world seems to be rotating around your building. So there's other ways of doing it, um, you know, by putting a picture in there, uh, you know, just don't use dome rotation to emulate time of day because it, it will look weird. Uh, yeah. Obviously, if you're not in a scene where you can actually see the HDRI, for example, if you were looking down at the ground and the window was obscured from view, then obviously you can fill your boots in that case. But if the HDRI is actually visible, don't do it because it will just look weird. So what we've got is we've got this scene with no lights inside the room. So all of the light is spilling in through this window and it's reflecting off the floor and then obviously it's bouncing. As you can see, the light is kind of illuminating the walls around it and for in terms of photorealism this is exactly what you want because you want the, the the scene to look as realistic as possible and more often than not during the day people won't have their interior lights on so you know it will look like this obviously what we do have to bear in mind is that the human eye is capable of a much greater dynamic range of lighting intensity by which I mean if you were in this room in real life, this window would be more than enough to illuminate the room to be able to see everything in the dark corners and all that sort of thing because your your eye is able to see much deeper shadows and much brighter highlights. So what we need to do is we need to use the tools that we've been given to actually create that effect to give us a high dynamic range. So I'm gonna turn the plane back on. Now this is obviously way over exaggerated. We don't need, <laughs> we don't need the plane to be that bright. So we're going to come back into our surfaces tab and we're gonna open up the emission property and we need to adjust this so that it kind of gives us a little bit of detail in the shadows but it's not making the entire room look like it's floodlit because that's not the effect we're going for so we're going to drop the luminance right down i'm going to go for like a hundred kcdmr2 and we're going to close down the left pane so that we can see now that's much much closer to what i'm going for although it is still a little bit drab that's still a little bit dark so maybe if we go up to 150 and we see what that does now that is much closer to what i'm after as you can see, if we close down that side tab as well, now you've got the window light 
bouncing off the walls you can still see the reflection of that light clearly on the radiator and over in the area by the door but the shadows are filled in with a little bit of light from that ceiling plane that we created in the last video now if you wanted to tweak this you could it's as simple as just changing that down like some people may want it to be darker even still so they can go down to maybe 80 so that the details are filled in but it's still dark enough for you to see that it's a dark room now what you have to bear in mind is that the less light IRA has to work with the longer it's going to take to give you a nice clean render the area at the window the area reflected on the floor and even the radiator will render quite nice and sharp very quickly but the areas in the shadows are going to take much much longer to render because the ira hasn't got as much light to work with having said that the less light sources that you have the less trouble ira is going to have as well so you have to kind of balance between using lots and lots of ghost lights or light sources and using very few now in this we've only got the hdri and the plane on the ceiling so that's going to not give ira too much thinking to do it's gonna it's still gonna take a while because it's a very dark scene but there's only two light sources so it's not going to take forever now obviously once we start introducing characters into this scene and trying to illuminate them that's when things get a little bit more complicated because you don't want your characters to be so dimly lit that they look crazy but at the same time you don't want them to be so well lit that they look completely out of place in scenes like this so in scenes like this you want to be really careful about how you illuminate the scene and how you illuminate the characters to make sure that the balance between photorealism and rendering times is still kind of reasonable. One way that we can achieve this effect is obviously by rendering the characters uh, separately. So if I were to create a camera in this scene, let's just apply, we'll call it camera one. And there we go, we apply the active viewport transforms and we're gonna jump straight into that camera and then what we're going to do is we're going to open the parameters and we're going to set some values so we're going to change the y translate value because most characters in your game are going to be between 150 and 200 tall so i'm going to go for somewhere in the middle like 165 that seems like a kind of maybe that's a bit high let's go down to 135 there we go 30 centimeters lower that's a much better kind of angle and then what we have to do is remember that we're rendering the scene at 135 and then when we render our characters in a separate scene we can make sure that we render the with the camera at the same height relative to the characters and then they won't look completely out of place in this scene and then we can light them a little better you know fill in those shadows a little bit more as long as we've got one main light source behind them creating a highlight down one side of their body then if we were to render out this image and then superimpose separate PNG files of the characters, as long as their lighting isn't completely bonkers, we'll get away with rendering those in a different scene so they'll stand out a little bit more. Now obviously that's only going to work if you're kind of cropping off their feet. Um, if, you're, if you're trying to render them um, you know, actually physically in the scene with their feet visible, then you're going to have a little work cut out for you because that's going to look really unrealistic and you might just be better rendering them in the scene um, and, you know, kind of highlighting them with spotlights or something like that. So in terms of uh, interior lighting, I know it feels like we haven't really changed anything, but we're, we're exploring in this video ways of keeping the scene looking photorealistic. So if we wanted to now, now that we've got this, if we wanted to, to emulate that the light was actually on in the room, we're going to have to do something else. So we're going to go back to texture shaded like so. We're going to hide the camera because that crosshair is going to get annoying and we're going to create a new object and this time we're going to create a sphere and it doesn't matter how big it is but we're going to go for maybe like 0.1 because we're going to have to shrink it down anyway we want it to have as few segments as possible 6 and 12 is fine it's not a problem so here we go a tiny little sphere and we're going to before we do anything else, we're going to go and change its position. So we want it to come right up like so. And we want it to sit 
kind of half embedded inside the ceiling fan. Now I'm assuming that the ceiling fan is smack bang in the middle of the room, which it is. So we don't actually have to do anything else. We've, we've embedded it halfway into the ceiling fan. We're kind of emulating the fact that there's a light bulb attached to the tip of that. Now you could actually get away with not hiding that at all. You could leave that perfectly visible. If we were to go into our surfaces tab, making sure we've got the sphere selected, we come down to our emission and we set that to white. In fact, we give it a slightly yellowish hue because it's a, it's going to be one of those ceiling lights that it's, they don't put out perfectly white lights. So we give it a very, very, very faint yellow tinge. There we go. And then we're going to change the luminance units to KCDMR2 and we'll leave it at 1500. Now we're going to jump back into camera one and we'll stick this into IRA mode and we'll see what happens. So as you can see at the moment, because it's such a small light source, it hasn't created that much light. So we might need to bump this up. We might, let's give it 5,000 and see what happens. It's still not creating a huge amount of light. So let's maybe go up to 15,000. And you can see it is illuminating ever so slightly. If we were to jump into perspective mode and look at it, you can see it is creating luminance there. But because it's such a tiny light source, unlike the plane, which covers the entire ceiling. This is effectively just a light bulb or a lamp, if you want to be technically accurate. So we need to make sure that that's going to be simulating the power of a single light bulb in the ceiling fan. And I'm thinking that maybe we're going to have to go quite a bit higher. So maybe 50,000. There we go. That's creating a much more realistic effect. If we get rid of that, now you can see it looks like that we're in a dingy room with a ceiling light illuminating the room. And then all the plane is doing is filling in those shadows a little bit to give us more of a visual effect of having a high dynamic range. And that's really what I would do if I were trying to create a photorealistic image. Um, if we move the camera around, you can see you can still see clearly the light reflecting on the floor. And if you look up, you can see clearly the light bulb in the ceiling fan is creating that dim light effect. And it's throwing, it's spilling light around the room in a way that's much more realistic. And that to me kind of works. But I hope you found it useful. I look forward to hearing your comments. Feel free to drop me a comment in the section below and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye bye.